students. In this video, we're going to be talking about rate of change of a graph, which is known as the slope of a graph. So first of all, let's define what rate of change means. When I talk about the rate of change, how fast something is changing, what I'm talking about with the word rate is a ratio. You see the word rate in the word ratio there. So a ratio, a fraction that compares the change in one quantity with the change in another. For example, the speed of a car is a rate of change comparing distance to time. We use rates of change all of the time for lots of different things. And you're going to see in the practice problems for this lesson, there's a variety of different rates of change that we can measure. One of the easiest ways for us to display a rate of change is actually to just look at a graph, a, a line graph that shows how something changes over time. Here I have a line graph that shows the change in distance over time. The change in distance over time can be measured with the slope or the ratio of distance to time. All right, let's take a look at this example about Arvind. Arvind leaves his house and jogs to Corey's house. Later, they walk to a local pizza shop. The graph shows the distance Arvind traveled between the time he left home, zero, and when he arrived at the pizza shop at 20, let's see, this counts up by two, four, six, so 22 minutes. When was Arvind traveling the fastest? Well, he's traveling the fastest when he has the highest, the greatest rate of change. What that means is I'm looking for the steepest slope on this graph. Here, this is sloped uh, pretty steep, not too steep, but pretty steep. Here I have a flat slope. That means that Arvind was not moving during this time. He was probably at his friend's Corey, Corey's house before he went to the pizza place. And then they walk kind of slowly to the pizza place. This slope is not as great as this slope. So therefore, Arvind was moving the fastest between 0 and 4, 8. Let's see, uh, 0 and 4, 5, 6, 7. 0 and 7 minutes. You really have to watch your axes to figure out what numbers you're counting up by. So between zero and seven minutes, Arvind was going the fastest. How long was Arvind at Corey's house? How can you tell? Well, he was there from seven minutes to 15 minutes. Uh, so to find the difference, the elapsed time, I need to do 15 minus seven is a total of eight minutes. How do I know? Because uh, Arvind wasn't moving at that time. He was staying one mile away from his original position. So he must have been somewhere that he was stationary. And lastly, compare the graph during the times Arvind was jogging to Corey's house and when they were walking to the pizza shop. Here's the jogging time. Okay, so this is steeper. This is less steep because they're walking. So this is more gradual. The steeper the slope, the faster the speed. The more gradual the slope, the slower the speed. And that's what we see in this guy. Okay, now, wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to quantify that instead of just saying steeper and less steep? Well, actually, there is. There's a number that we can attach that is the ratio, uh, the rate of change uh, in a graph. In this case, for this particular graph, it would be the rate of change of distance compared to time. And that is also known as the speed. But it doesn't have to be speed. Uh, this is just going to be the rate of change of whatever's on the y-axis compared to whatever's on the x-axis. We call that the slope. And the slope is measured by finding the rise and finding the run. Now, we're going to learn an equation that will do this for us later on. Uh, but for right now, we're going to use a really simple equation where we just uh, inspect the graph, figure out what the size of the rise is, figure out what the size of the run is, and then just plug in those numbers. Now notice that essentially what we're doing here is we're picking a starting point, and then we're looking for another point where the graph perfectly crosses uh, a, one of the intersections of lines that are on the graph. So I notice that 1, 1, the graph perfectly crosses the intersection of lines in the background. And then I notice that it crosses right in the middle between, uh, let's see, that's going to be 1 and 2. It crosses right in the middle there. Uh, it might be at a perfect intersection right here. It looks like it could be. It's right in the middle here. Hey, but it, there's another perfect intersection where, there's a, where the line perfectly crosses some of the grid marks on the graph at 3, 
one, two, three, and then up five. Hey, what is the rise between one, one, and three, five? How far does the graph go up? Well, it goes up one, two, three, four. I'm just gonna count squares in the back of the graph. Up four, and how far did it go over before it went, went up four? It went over one, two units. So the slope of this is going to be four up over two, four over two. We would say that the slope of this graph is two. Uh, we could also call the graph of this two over one. Hey, if the graph, if the slope of this graph is two over one, that means it goes up two over one. Let's just see if it actually does that. Up two over one. So there's another point in the middle here where it would have perfectly crossed a grid mark on the graph where we could have put a point. Up two over one. What if the rise is negative? What if a slope of a graph is negative? That means it goes down for its rise instead of up. Down, like if it was negative two, it'd be down two over one, down two over one. And when I say over one, I mean to the right one. As long as you're using the value that's on top of the slope, rise over run, you're going up or down, depending on whether this is positive or negative, and then over to the right by whatever the run says. All right, we are going to work some practice problems. You get plenty of practice with slope in just a minute, but you should understand that slope is a rate of change and that we can measure the slope by figuring out the rise and the run and putting the rise over the run.